Hello Makers! Welcome back to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe, and today it's all about retractions. Stick around! Welcome back Makers! So if you're anything like me, retractions can be quite a pain. Now for those of you who do not know what retraction is because they're just starting out, the easiest way to explain it is you have the nozzle which extrudes the filament while doing the print. Now sometimes you want that nozzle to move from one place to the next to keep on uh, printing, however it has to go through an open space. Now in order to do that travel movement, you would like ideally to stop the extrusion in order to avoid stringing. Now retraction actually pulls the filament back up into the nozzle while that movement is done so you get a pretty much clean print in open spaces. Now every filament needs different retractions and this can be quite a headache to figure out. While I've had my fair share of fails when it comes to retractions, I figured I wanted to find a simple and easy way to tackle retraction for each kind of filament I used. So what I did was I took the idea of my temperature tower test and I created a retraction tower test. And that is this little model right here. It is very simple in design. I did this within about five minutes in Tinkercad. What I did was I did a base, a triangle base, sorry, at the bottom, three columns, and some bridging. I did this in six different sections. Now, the reason why I did six different sections is because I wanted Simplify 3D to tackle each section with different filament retraction settings just to make my life easier. And therefore, I wouldn't have to ruin a whole print if that particular print, for example, is very smooth in the bottom, but then has a lot of open spaces at the top. This helped out quite a lot. And I figured I'd share my experience with you guys. Now I have done this test with two different filaments on three different printers, just to give you an idea of all the difference a printer makes from one to the other, whether it's Bowden style extruder, whether it's a direct extruder, whether it's a Cartesian, a Delta or a Core XY printer. But first, before I show you these in detail, I'm going to show you how to set it up in Simplify 3D. So what you're going to do is open Simplify 3D. You're going into File and Import Models. You're going to import the six STL files that make up the tower and they're in Simplify 3D they're going to be spread across the build plate. So you're going to go on the first one, double click on it, go reset position, go on the second one, reset, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And as you can see they're all aligned on top of each other. And then what you do is you highlight them over here, you click on move, and you put them in the center of the build plate. And now we have the retraction tower. Now what we need to do is we need to create a process for each and every single section of the tower. Now there might be an easier way to do this, but this is the best way I found out how to do it myself. I'm going to unhighlight everything except the first one, and I'm going to add a process. Now once that's done, I'm going to click OK, unhighlight it or uncheck it, Check the next one, do add, do OK, grab the third one, do add, click OK. And as you can see, it's creating a process for each and every single one. The one thing to remember is if I forgot, for example, the third process, if there are supports, which there aren't in here, it's going to replicate the same process all over again. So ideally on the first one, you make sure that certain settings like support are not there if you don't need them, because what will happen is it will create support on each and every single one. So this just saves you a bit of hassle. So we have a fourth one, fifth one, and the sixth one. And now we have the six processes, which will cover the six different sections of the tower. 
Now for this particular episode, what we're going to use is the retraction distance, and that is the amount of filament which is going to be retracted back into the nozzle, the retraction speed, which is how fast it's going to retract it back. We're going to use coasting, and coasting is when the extruder will actually stop pushing out filament, and in this case is going to stop pushing out or in this example, it's going to stop pushing out filament at 0.2 millimeter before the layer ends. The other option we'll use is wipe distance. Now this is two millimeters, which means that the nozzle will retrace the last two millimeters of the layer you just printed and wipe the nozzle there. So if there are any excess filament, it just leaves it on the print. The other option we will use in the sixth section is this right here and this is perform retraction during wipe movement now what that does is while the printer is actually retracting it will also perform the wipe movement if that is off what will happen is the printer will first do the retraction and then will do the wipe movement having done that and having done all the settings which i will explain to you what they were you just click on prepare to print, you select all processes, and you click OK. And then you have the sliced file ready with the six different processes. Once done, you save it to disk, and you send it off to the printer. Once done, this is the end result. Well, hopefully. <laughs> I printed these six towers exactly in the same settings for each and every single one because I wanted a very consistent test just to see exactly what the difference was between one printer and the other and also one filament from the other. The only differences here are temperature ranges I used between the PETG and the RPLA. For the RPLA, I set the hot end at 200 degrees and the heat bed at 50 degrees and for the PETG, the hot end was at 250 degrees and the heat bed at 80 degrees. Now we can start off with comparing the RPLA. Now from left to right on your screen, the prints are done with the Emotion Tech Micro Delta rework. The center one is the Enervision EV160 and the one on the right is done with the original Prusa i3 Mark II. Now, for the layers, the different sections, in the first section, I switched off the retraction completely. I wanted to get sort of a benchmark of how it would look like without retraction. For the second layer, or the second section, I switched retraction on. However, I only chose to use 0.8 millimeter of retraction distance and set a speed of 35 millimeter a second for as retraction speed. I also included two millimeters of wipe movement. For the third section, I chose to increase the retraction distance to 1.5 millimeter, left the retraction speed at 35 millimeters a second, left the wipe movement at two millimeters, but also included the, the uh, coast of 0.2 millimeters. For the fourth section, I doubled the retraction distance to three millimeters, kept the same retraction speed of 35 millimeters a second and also the same white movement of two millimeter and coasting of 0.2. For the fifth section, I kept the retraction at three millimeter distance. I increased the retraction speed of 45 millimeters a second, increased also the white movement of four millimeters and also left the coasting at 0.2 millimeters. Last but not least, the last section. I left everything the same as the fifth, which is retraction distance of three millimeters, retraction speed of 45 millimeters a, section, uh, a second, wipe distance of four millimeter and coasting of 0 0.2. However, what I did was I switched on the option to uh, do the wipe movement and retraction at the same time. That is usually very handy for Delta printers. And these were the end results. Now, as you can see, while the settings were exactly identical on each printer, the outcome varies quite a bit. And the reason for that is it's not just the retraction settings you use. Apart from the fact that there are more retraction settings, which I didn't go into, 
There is also the attributes of the printer itself. How effective is the cooling? What type of printer it is? What type of extruder you're using? Which is why I wanted to do the same test over and over again, just to give you guys an idea of how each printer is affected by each setting. Now, in this particular set of towers, you can see that the Bowden style extruder, or the Delta, couldn't handle the second section either with retraction. It started doing well on the third. If you look at it very closely, which I doubt you would be able to see even if I do it on macro, it's much cleaner on the sixth layer or on the sixth section where you chose the wipe movement. However, the other two printers fared fairly well. The only difference is, is the bridging, but that's a different story which I have covered in a different episode. <laughs> So next up is the PETG. Now, once again, I use the same exact settings as I did for the RPLA. And it was quite surprising actually how different it handled the retractions on PETG, which goes to show that you cannot choose the same retraction settings for each filament. They're completely different. The Delta just, I had no idea how to handle retraction with all the settings I threw at it. Now, granted, there are much more settings which I could have used, which I didn't cover in this episode because it would take too long. But for those particular settings, it just didn't work. It didn't work. What probably could have worked is maybe increase the retraction further, increase the speed. Also, use the Z hop, which is lifting the nozzle up after each layer in order to avoid having as much stringing as possible. Surprisingly though, is the Enervision EV160 performed very, very, very well in this test, particularly in the sixth section right at the top. It did it very cleanly. The structure itself feels much more rigid than the one done by the Prusa i3 Mark II, which is very brittle. It feels like most of the layers didn't even bond well together. I have to say that this is the second one I did because the first one I did on the Prusa actually crumbled in my hand as soon as I took it off the heat bed. But this just goes to show it's not just the settings you use, it's the type of printer, it's the type of efficiency of the fan that you have, a lot of factors come into play. Now I know a lot of you guys will be upset with me for only covering Simplify 3D for this particular episode and there's a very 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 valid reason for that. The first one is I know that I can do this in Simplify 3D because it's a very easy process to do a multi-process print on Simplify 3D. I have no idea whether it's even possible to do in Cora. I will find out. If you guys have any idea how, please let me know in the comment section. Once I learn how, I promise you, I will revisit this and do it once again in Cura or Slicer or any other freely available software. It doesn't actually take long. If you cannot do a multi-process print on Cura or Slicer, you can just take the bottom section and you can still test out a very small print which wouldn't take long. To print these, it took about an hour each. You can probably print them slower if you use faster speeds, but I just want, I, I wasn't in a rush to do this, so I wanted to make sure I do it right. That is it for me guys today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you didn't, please let me know why. If you want me to do more of these, I will definitely do so. In the meantime, I wanna thank you once again Please like, comment, share, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And in the meantime, happy making, guys.